Hello, I'm David Wasdell, the director of the Apollo Gaia Project. The Apollo Gaia Project has been set up over the last six or seven years to tackle two absolutely crucial questions critical to the future of our civilization. The first, and it regards climate change, is by how much does the natural Earth system multiply or amplify the effects of what we have done in changing the greenhouse composition of the atmosphere? That's a fundamental question. The second one is this. Is there some kind of critical threshold, or as we would say, tipping point, beyond which our climate system takes off on its own momentum into a condition we would describe as a runaway episode, in which case we have no further ability to control it? Those two questions underlie all of the work I've done in the last seven years. Now, to start with, we thought we could look at the feedback processes in climate change and make some kind of model of those and find out the answers to those two questions. And we did about four years' work actually exploring how to create a conceptual structure or framework by which to um, answer those questions in terms of the strength of feedback mechanisms. Lovely peeps of conceptual analysis. Difficulty was when we came to put in the actual facts by how much each feedback mechanism contributes to the problem, quantification was very, very difficult. And moreover, the connections between feedback mechanisms were so difficult to create any sense of numerical understanding that the uncertainties coming out of our work were even greater and the problems we were trying to solve as we went into it. Now, we had a huge change of methodology about two years ago, and we shifted from trying to develop, as it were, a complex computer-driven model of the feedback system to asking the question, is there any way we can get access to the way the Earth system behaves in the past that would give us a more accurate understanding of its response to change in carbon dioxide concentration. And if we had that kind of empirical evidence, it would of course include all the feedback processes, known and unknown, and all their interactions, because that's the way the animal works. Simples. Question, how do you do it? Well. We've developed a bit of a story here, and I want to introduce you this afternoon to the, the climate cheetah. And the climate cheetah has its origin in a mythical meeting of the fellows of the Royal Zoological Society, who wanted to find out how fast can a cheetah run. They were very learned people, and they had access to a lot of computer facilities. So they divided up their understanding of the cheetah into its heart capacity, its lungs, its oxygen intake, its twitch mechanisms and its rump muscles, the skeletal leverage, the, the, the ratio of weight to skeletal strength, uh, tunnel, wind tunnel studies of its aerodynamics, and, and all sorts of other parameters, and dished these out around the computer ensemble for specialists to work on. And they did this stuff. And then they had an integrative panel who put together all these different specialist studies and came up with a figure that says, we think a cheetah at maximum speed could run at about 28.4 miles per hour. Isn't that very helpful? Thank you so much for your work. But the meeting was attended by a game warden from South Africa who intimately knew cheetahs and thought, this is intuitively thought, that's a bit of a slow answer. He said, you know, I've got a jeep with a speedometer on it, and I reckon I could chase a cheetah in its, in its hunting and see how fast it actually went. And they go, oh, these empirical studies are subject to all sorts of problems. We know that. But if you feel you must, then do try. So he went back to the game reserve, and he got in his jeep, and he found a cheetah that was chasing a, a, a deer prey. And he tried to keep up with it. But of course, the cheetah moved all over the place and, and, and wove and chased, and the deer went this way and that way and jumped here and there. He couldn't possibly get a top speed answer out of his speedometer. So he thought, I know. I know a policeman who works in traffic control in Pretoria. And he uses one of those handheld radar guns to track 
traffic speed. I wondered if he'd let me borrow it. And so he went back to Pretoria, met up with his friend from the police force and borrowed the radar gun. Came back out in his jeep and pointed the radar gun at the cheetah as it was running at flat out speed after its prey and registered in an instant the speed it was going. So the next meeting of the fellows learned at the Zoological Society, he came back, he said, do you know, we did that and we actually have now an empirical test of the top speed of a cheetah that could be maintained for only a few seconds. And it is 71.4 miles per hour. And the fellows' faces dropped and they said, oh, that's about two and a half times the estimate from our very learned ensemble of computer modelers. And we would tend to take that in preference to this one-off piece of so-called empirical, uh, non-scientific exploration. And we suggest that perhaps you would uh, not come back to the next meeting. Of course it's a metaphor, but the cheetah metaphor about climate change is actually very episodic because we have been able in the last two years to get five dis different disciplines to track the way the Earth system amplifies the effect of carbon dioxide in its atmosphere and the sensitivity, if you like, the speed, the, the, the rate at which the Earth system responds is two and a half times the outcome of our current highly sophisticated set of computer models which is being used in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and as the basis for all our international negotiations. It has been a breakthrough.